first place that I want to start today where we get a lot of questions is around the item type expression builder and building up expressions for item types. Um, not sure where the audience is, how familiar you are with these. So I'm going to try to touch, you know, a little bit for everybody here, whether you're fairly advanced. If you are kind of new to expressions, what they are are little programming snippets. They're the way that we really pull out intelligent data and put it into item types. And these little programming snippets, they can pull out data from element kind of data or data from files or models. We can get at .NET system functions like math functions and string functions, do things like looking up data in uh, we can get at civil properties in addition to your element CAD kind of properties. We can get at civil data as well. We'll talk about some of those. There's also a wide variety of operators available to do if-then kind of condition testings or arithmetic kind of calculations. You want to add things together or multiply things to, together, those types of things. So that's the basic structure of what an expression is. Now, as we start going through this and looking at an what one might look like, it's going to go grab something off the current element, wherever that element that the item type is attached to, and return some value, like a color or a length or a parameter. Now, these are basic colors here, or this is a basic expression here that would return the color. Now, a couple tips when you're doing this. One thing is when you're in creating item types and item type properties, you must save that property before you can open the expression builder and get into there. Um, the other thing is expressions are all case sensitive. Now I see one question coming in here that is kind of pertinent to where we're at right now. And that is, is there a listing of all functions available? And there is, and that listing is right here on this dialog that I'm in here. They're not documented somewhere else as a separate giant list because there are hundreds and hundreds of them, and they do change. They keep getting all the time. So the documentation is meant to happen through the expression builder as you select these. Now, this particular dialog doesn't have it open right now. But as you pick on an expression, there is an area down at the bottom that opens up that gives you some documentation around that. Now, going a little deeper through using the expression, here's an example of this perimeter, and I'm setting that and storing it in an item type property called circumference. Once you do that, you can reuse those item type properties for another property calculation. So, second property called volume. And the expression that we're putting in here is going to use this first expression property, this dot circumference, and apply some math functions to it. Notice the use of, of the cubing here, parentheses to group things together so that this cubing happens and this six multiplied times 3.14 squared happens first, then those two are divided. So you've got your basic math functions in here as well. We can take that a little bit further using some other expressions. So instead of estimating pi as 3.14, I could substitute in a different function here into my expression, the system function to go grab pi. So this is a dot net function where I'm pulling in the true value of pi, not the rounded estimated. Another example is using the dot net system function to round the value. So this computation, I want to round to the nearest two decimal places. How expressions get built up. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.